Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Stacey Van Dyke, and we're expecting severe weather to move into the Fargo area in about three hours. Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson joining us straight away on this first alert weather day to help us get prepared. Hutch. Thanks, Stacey. I got to tell you, it's very important in these situations to stay informed. We've declared a first alert weather day and we're getting that summer type thunderstorm activity firing up right now. And one of the best ways to stay prepared is by downloading the Valley News Live weather app for free. Search VNL weather in the app store today. Here's one of the highlights of it. It's better than any other app out there because you can get an app from the West Coast, from the East Coast, but nobody up updates the app with videos like we do. You'll always have fresh video updates of the forecast and the current happenings and current information. Watches, warnings and alerts show up on there, so make sure you change those settings to follow you no matter where you go. If a warning is issued even outside of your home area, you're going to be warned about it on Valley News Live weather app. Right now we have clouds and it's not too bad in the FM area as we head into the middle of our Wednesday as forecast, but things are firing up now. We have got a cluster of storms that are moving through uh, the I-35 corridor north of the Twin Cities and the main event getting started down in eastern South Dakota down here. Those storms are strong and severe already. Your hour by hour forecast for this evening to plan it out shows that we could have some spotty thunder shower activity in northern Minnesota and the atmosphere up here not as volatile as it is down to the south. The red colors here is where we have a lot of juice in the atmosphere, high humidity, high energy for thunderstorms to form, and those will have the greatest chance at making some sizable hail upwards of one inch in diameter to maybe a little more in the far south and southeast counties. There's going to be some spin in the atmosphere down here as we go into the evening hours. So after dinner, things get a little bit more volatile then. So between now and the dinner hour, uh, hit and miss showers and storms. The main event arrives as we go through about that six to seven o'clock time frame. Mainly, look at this, Southern Valley and Eastern counties. This will have impacts on some rivers, but the good news is most of our Minnesota rivers and tributaries have been seeing the waters recede. As we go through the evening hours heading late, they exit pretty quickly. And again, as we go into Thursday, another first alert weather day has been declared Stacy all threats and the focus right here in the valley where you see the orange colors is enhanced, meaning we have a little bit higher risk of seeing some tornadoes. A few of them are possible even in our area. We'll keep you posted on that tonight. If we see any of that, it'll be far south and southeast. Our by hour details on this and Thursday's event coming up here in just a few short moments. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. New for you now at four, the man accused of a stabbing in South Fargo and leading police on a multi-day search has been charged. 23-year-old Jonathan Peterson is charged with felony robbery and aggravated assault, accused of stabbing a man on Friday. Fargo police put out a description of the suspect and Peterson was taken into custody in Beltrami County three days later. Also new at four, a former Moorhead teacher is behind bars after investigators say he uploaded several files online showing sexual abuse of children. 25-year-old Kayla Brush is charged with two felonies in Cass County District Court, including promoting or directing an obscene sexual performance by a minor and possession of certain prohibited materials. Recently unsealed court documents say the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children tipped off Fargo police to someone who was uploading suspected child porn on the app Kick back in February. Brush allegedly said he only sent them as a result of being off his mental health medication. Authorities in Bemidji are investigating a suspicious house fire. They say it happened on Monday in the northwest part of town. Here's a picture of the damage on the inside. Authorities say the outside of the house is not damaged. The cause is yet to be determined. No one was hurt. Moorhead authorities are notifying the area of a high risk sex offender. They say Randall Dean Adams will be living in the 1600 block of 4th Avenue North. Authorities say he threatened to sexually assault a woman and inappropriately touched her. He completed a sentence last Thursday. We have new information on an early morning crash in South Fargo. Police now say the driver who crashed into a tree may have suffered a medical emergency. That happened around 530 this morning in front of the First International Bank on 45th Street South. The driver was taken to a hospital with minor injuries. The official cause of that crash is still under investigation. Breaking news on the Roe v. Wade bill in the Senate. Moderate Democrat Joe Manchin joined Senate Republicans in blocking the advancement of the Women's Health Protection Act, a bill that would make the landmark Roe v. Wade decision federal law. Republicans, including some moderates who support abortion rights, say the legislation goes too far. As Natalie Brand explains, congressional Democrats are seizing the issue in hopes that it will mobilize voters to the streets and the polls this November. 
Ahead of Wednesday's procedural vote on an abortion rights bill, Democrats acknowledged it would fail in the evenly divided Senate. This vote requires 60 and we don't have 10 Republicans. It is not Roe v. Wade codification, it's an expansion. West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin opposes his party's bill. Instead, he signaled support for a more narrow measure, like the one from GOP moderate Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski. I'm supporting the codification of Roe. Democratic leaders forged ahead with their bill, they say to get all 100 U.S. senators' votes on the record. Protecting the right to choose at this critical moment is one of the most consequential Sequential votes we could possibly take and the American people are watching. The legislation before us today would make our laws even more extreme. Majority Leader Schumer will earn kudos from Planned Parenthood for this show vote today, but he's not going to convince anyone. The push to make Roe v. Wade into federal law has intensified in the days since Politico published Justice Alito's bombshell draft opinion from February, which signaled the conservative majority court could overturn the landmark decision. New CBS News polling shows the fate of Roe versus Wade has yet to motivate most voters heading into this year's midterm elections. We're a party who defends life. Today is the start of the galvanization of all women in this country. The debate over abortion rights has sparked demonstrations nationwide leading up to a day of rallies planned for this Saturday. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. More than 20 states, mostly Republican-led, are expected to move ahead laws to restrict access to abortion if Roe v. Wade is overturned. Today, Maine GOP Senator Susan Collins released a statement saying she'll continue working with colleagues on legislation to maintain the current legal framework for abortion rights in the U.S. Rock stars in Ukraine are teaming up with international celebrities to raise spirits and money as the war with Russia rages on. This song of protest posted from the Ukrainian capital went viral just as the singer and soldier prepared to return to the front lines of Ukraine's war with Russia. Pink Floyd saw the video and gave him a call. Would you mind to use your vocal session for a Pink Floyd song? What, what would you say? And I said, let me think yes. He went on to say once the war is over, he plans to perform live with Pink Floyd and also looks forward to touring the U.S. Their collaboration is now raising money for humanitarian relief in Ukraine, and then they're not the only ones. Ed Sheeran teamed up with a Ukrainian rock group to remix one of his songs. Gas prices have climbed again in the metro. Some stations in Fargo are selling a gallon at 419. That's up a dime from the highest mark on Monday. AAA says the average price is 409. That's a dollar 20 more than what it cost a year ago at this time. Inflation continues to march higher, but as Donya Bacchus explains, there might be a glimmer of good news in the latest data. Gas is at a record high, forcing many Americans to adjust their budget. I definitely am eating a lot more chicken and rice, a lot more top ramen. But food is also getting more expensive. A new government report shows grocery store prices jumped nearly 11% over the past year, the largest 12-month increase since 1980. Are you a little bit more conscious about what you're spending? Yeah, like when it comes towards the brands, I'll be like, okay, well, maybe I have to choose a different brand to kind of even out the balance. Almost everything we buy costs more, though there may be a sign inflation is easing. Overall, consumer prices in April jumped 8.3% over last year, slightly down from a 40-year high of 8.5% in March. In essence, going from an 8.5% annual rate to an 8.3% annual rate is like telling someone who's sick, well, your temperature is gone from 105 to 104.7. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger says inflation's fever has likely peaked and could cool more as the Federal Reserve raises interest rates further. At the same time, the war in Ukraine continues to impact global prices for oil and food. President Biden traveled to Illinois and announced new action to help U.S. farmers ramp up production. We have to keep investing in our farmers to reduce the cost, to reduce prices to consumers. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. 
Even with the current steps to ease inflation, economists believe prices will continue to climb, just not as fast as they have been. More than 107,000 Americans died of drug overdoses last year, setting another record in the nation's escalating overdose epidemic. It's a 15 percent increase from the previous record set in 2020. The White House is now promoting its recently announced National Drug Control Strategy. The plan involves connecting more people to treatment, disrupting drug trafficking, and expanding access to the overdose-reversing medication naloxone. Last year, overdoses involving fentanyl and other synthetic opioids shot up 23 percent. Cocaine overdoses also went up 23 percent and meth related deaths were up 34 percent. Today, Governor Tim Walz has signed a bill providing $300 million to address the opioid crisis in Minnesota. The legislation will use money won in a multi-state settlement against opioid manufacturers. That settlement totaled $26 billion, with Minnesota's share being $300 million over 18 years. Gigi's Playhouse in Fargo, North Dakota's only Down Syndrome Achievement Center, is still building back after arson took down the building one year ago today. Valley News Team's Jordan Schreyer got a tour of the new space to see how they're rising from the ashes. Gigi's host hopes to be in the space sometime mid to late summer. All of their programs are completely free to families and they don't get any government support. Gigi's is in the middle of a capital campaign to raise money and rebuild. If you'd like to support people with Down syndrome in our community, you can find this story on valleynewslive.com and on your VNL News app.